Hello, Hairbrain fans, friends, and followers all over the world. We're in an exciting city. We're in Montreal, one of my favorite cities in North America. It's the perfect blend of European and North American culture in one city. And we're in a very exciting salon, Salon Pure, working with an incredible team tonight. We've got a lot going on. You're going to get to see a color application, a finished model, some styling. Then there's going to be a little bit of a photo shoot happening. First off, we're going to get to the heart of the matter, which is innovative color using Davinez. Uh, and the Davines color line. We're going to work with this gentleman here, Mr. Rock LeMay. Say hi, Rock. Hi, everyone. Rock is an award-winning hairdresser in both Canada and the United States. He's been hair colorist of the year in both countries. He's also got a fabulous celebrity clientele, and he's got over 30 years of experience, and he's got this incredible technical color application planned for you. So he's starting off the application right now. We've got a finished model where you can actually see what the look looks like. He's got notes, diagrams, he's got everything. Take it away, Rock. Tell us a little bit about the technique. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the, the site, and it's a pleasure for me to have the opportunity to share with you uh, some ideas, some creative technique. My goal today is very simple, is I want to give you a blueprint where you could go back into your salon tomorrow and be able to use this technique for your daily client, as well if you want to be creative with it. At the same time, how could you take it to the next level and be creative? Um, so first, before we go any further, right now you're seeing me applying colors, I wanted to explain you a little bit how I work with color. So we'll take you to the flip chart that's over here, and we'll just explain you a little bit the concept of how I design color. In general, as a colorist into the Salon Pure, um, I don't cut hair, I don't style hair. So for the sake of our client to be able to leave the Salon with the perfect look of color and cut and style is we need to establish a concept, a system, so the stylist, as hey the colors, Joe. works together. So we have here this head diagram, and I work with three zones, basically. I work with the base, which is your fundamental section of your cut. You determine the length, you determine if it's going to be solid, you determine if you do an undercut, and this is a zone where you decide if you're going to be doing either a dark color to give it a definition or a light color where you want it to give volume, movement, or make a section disappear. Then we work with the texture zone, which you'll see me working presently on my mannequin head, which is where everything happens. This is where the excitement of your color is going to be. And this is where you decide to do either some slicing, some block coloring, some different type of movement to create all that excitement. And it's a little bit like a house. You've got your basement, you have your texture, this is your living space. Then you have the lid. The lid, this is where everything is connecting together and this is what's make it finish. And the way I work is I work into a circular movement. So as you can see, they're ring. And those rings are basically, you could move them according to the cut you're doing. You could bring the ring towards the front, you could bring the ring towards the back, side, make them wider, narrow, depending how you want to design your color. And we're going to talk a little bit more during your class today, uh, how I work with that. So amazing. I love, you know, how, how deep you've taken color. I know that, you know, at this point in time, color is very emotional, it's very visual, but there's an incredible technical aspect to it, you know, to be able to break things down and have a concept. And I love, you know, you were saying to me earlier about, you know, how so many hair cutters and precision hair cutters have technique and theory. Yeah. And you feel that in your 30 years as a colorist, you've kind of formulated that. And especially to be able to communicate because you specialize. What's a, what, tell us a little bit about why you chose to specialize in one versus the other, and have you done that for your whole career? Well, actually, I started as a hairdresser, like most everybody. Doing everything. Doing everything. A little back combing, yes. a little But before out. being a hairdresser, I started, I studied in art and as a graphic designer. Okay. So for me, I was attracted to the color, to um, the law of color, uh, right. everything. So then I decided I wanted to be a hairdresser um, because my dad was a hairdresser also. Yeah. But unfortunately, during his career, he got allergic to hair color and he couldn't keep on uh, practicing. Yeah, the products back in the day were a yeah. lot harsher yeah. than they are now. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. For Thank sure. goodness for that evolution. And uh, so then I became a salon owner at the time. I had a little salon in Ottawa then for seven years. And then I decided I was approached by a company, a hair color company at the time, to start at the bottom of this, the, this just step basically. Yeah. So if you went through that kind of the apprenticeship when, yeah. model, work your way And that's where I got craft. attracted to color. I yeah. really love the color. Um, color for me, it's graphic, it's concept, and it brings the hair alive. Like, you know, it's something very exciting for me versus the cut. Um, 
Okay, so something that's super exciting to me right now, and we touched on this with Naomi Knight a few weeks ago, yep. were these things that you're using, the flambayage strips. Can you talk a little bit about them? Well, this is an amazing product. You know, we all have different alternative tools that we could work with. We have foils, we have thermal paper, and we have these. What's fascinating about it, it's first of all, it's the adhesive that's on the, the, the film. So it's actually got a light, like kind of stickiness yep. to it. Okay. Yeah. The flambayage strips. And it's strips. not damaging to the hair, so yeah. there's nothing to worry. Um, so what it does, it helps you actually, if you look here at my strand, is the strand here, the hair is really well fixed. Mm -hmm. So now me, as a designer, what you do, it gives you the freedom to create. How do you want to place your color on this? You know what, I want to try cutting it too. You know, imagine putting a whole bunch of strips and then you can cut all your that angles could in. It could be kind of fun, do like yeah. a perfect graduated bob. Put all that the, and me and Anna are going to try that one. Yeah. We're going to put all the strips in and cut the shape in like three dimensionally. That and, could be kind of fun. And see what's very fun, actually Naomi was showing that actually uh, on her last video, is doing a split. And then so peel you it. Just put, and then we just So this it. technique is called the split, where you yeah. peel it. So you exactly. stick it on top and you peel it. And some goes on one piece of flamboyage, some goes on yeah. the other. Excellent. And what's very interesting about that, it's actually removing hair from this section, pulling it on the other section. So when they're combing together, they're actually the two colors are blending it pretty well. Excellent. It's seamless. Excellent. Okay. So we're going to talk a lot about your sectioning in a minute here because you did this beautiful spiral sectioning. Yeah. But tell us what the formulas are. I think you have, it looks like you have at least three things mixed up over there. Yeah, exactly. What are they and what's the general idea of application? Uh, the formula, first of all, I'm using mask with Vibrochrome. Um, so here, right now at the base, what I'm applying is I'm applying a 4.55. I'm also incorporated into my formula, which uh, Ying is going to bring the charges over here. Um, I also incorporated a 2.11, which is actually, it's a nice dark blue. It's giving depth to my color. And a 1.0, which is actually giving me more depth to it. So I could have this nice deep burgundy color with your 20 volume. So I'm applying this to the zone here near the scalp. After here, I'll be using my mask D, the lightener. So I'm diffusing this right now into just that section. This is basically creating you the ring of light just basically around here, that section, that perimeter. So when the hair is gonna fall, it's just gonna give me that kind of like the light reflection. Then into the mid length and end, I just redeposit my 4.55 formula to the end here. Just diffuse it. Then we'll deposit a paper over it. And into my split, here, I will be using my formula here is my 8 point, uh, sorry, um, 5.56 with my 6.66. And I will just apply this color formula in that zone. So, Rock, as someone who's had, you know, so much experience with color over the years, I'm sure you've worked with a lot of different color lines. Yeah. Um, and now you exclusively work with the Davines color lines. Yes. Uh, can you tell us, you know, some of your impressions about working with the product and, you know, uh, generally to someone maybe who's never used it before, what do you love about it? Um, first of all, the quality. Um, definitely. Uh, before I went back to, uh, to Pure Salon, uh, Anna says, come to my salon, I'm giving you the key, go in, bring models to the salon, and do color, and let me know what you think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's no use going back to the salon if you don't like working with the product line. So I worked with the color, and I was really, really, really impressed of the color result. The shine, the vibrancy of the color, the durability of the color. But actually, you know what, what really got me, um, I don't know if you ever noticed on the mask box. Um, the mask box, if you flip it around, there's a picture of art in the front, mm -hmm. which yeah. is hairdresser that have taken um, pictures and sent it to Davinus, and Davinus has selected those and printed on their box. And if you turn it around, right. Davinus have printed the name of the hairdresser and uh, the region where it is. Because for the simple reason is Davinus believe, yes, we have the amazing product, but our product could only come alive and could be only wow because of who's using it. Right. And so they recognize us, the hairdresser, as the artists that are utilizing the product. And that really, for me, a manufacturer that is recognizing the artists that are using the product, for me, it's quite big. Yeah, that's, I think that's one of the beauties of Davinez, you know, how it really is about the individual artist. So now it looks like you're, uh, what is that? that 
the clear uh, formula? Is that a, a lightener? Yeah, that's yeah. your lightener. That's mask D. So it's my lightener. I'm working with a 20 volume. So if you could see, I'm only diffusing the product into this zone. Um, again, you have to visualize it that when it comes down, um, this is going to give you kind of a light effect within the section here. And when you're applying the color at the root, you're not too worried about bleeding or any kind of that because you're basically applying the single process yes. color to the... Correct. Uh, I'm not applying lightener right now at the root area, so I'm not worried about the bleeding. And then I'm just depositing a paper because I do not want the two colors to touch each other. So I'm using the paper that it's in between the section. And just diffusing this here. So, and when it comes to kind of washing these out, well, any tips? Or do they wash out very easily? Or actually, yes, they really, really remove easily with water. Mm. As soon as you put water on it, it just slides out, and uh, with no problem, without pulling the hair. Is this one strand that you just finished, is that all one color or is that three different colors? Actually, it's two colors. Two. Oh, yeah. You have here your 5.56 uh, with your 6.66. And then into the remaining length of the hair, you have your formula of your 4.55. So here it will be a little bit more brighter and darker it will towards be a little the roots. Darker. Yes. Okay. So here, if we do another section. And also, too, if you notice, I'm working into a circular pattern. So what's very important to understand about a circular pattern is the head is wider in this section, narrow in this section. So my section at the bottom has to be wider here and narrow here. So that in is in order purpose. to fall, yeah, in order to finish properly going around. So as Rock continues to put um, some more of these flambayage strips in, let's have a look at the finished product here and introduce you guys to Anna Pachito, the owner of Salon Pure and the hair cutter. Kel, if you want to step down. Hi, Hi Anna. How are you? We're Hi. so happy to be here with Anna. She's our happy host. We're here in the Salon Pure Academy in Montreal. Um, and Anna did this beautiful haircut. Tell me your name. Lillian. Lillian's beautiful haircut. And this is the exact color placement that Rock is working on now. Do you want to tell us a little bit about, about the haircut and, and what you're feeling, Anna? Sure. It was really easy because there was a beautiful base uh, there already. Uh, Nick Morel, one of our stylists at Pure, did the haircut about uh, a month ago. And I kind of layered it a little bit more, exposed some of the color effects a little bit more, but the basic shape was there. So all I have to do is follow a pattern. Uh, Lillian is an in-house model. We use her all the time. Beautiful, beautiful um, makeup done by your uh, makeup artist. Katerina, yeah. Katerina Ulyanov, who does uh, makeup for us uh, very often. And what's really pretty about it is that depending on how, you know, the texture that you give it, you can expose different parts either of the haircut and especially of the color effect. So you have this right. steel, oh, almost bluish hue that comes through in the bangs area. And then you have this, these brighter pieces that lay over, uh, you know, that portion of the color. Lots of movement. So Lots the, of the movement. concept that Rock was talking about with the three levels, do right. you think about that as you when you guys absolutely, are working together? Absolutely, absolutely. I started the cut and then I adapted it accordingly. So if you can see, there's a section uh, at the bottom right here. So obviously all of this section was left dark and all of the color placement happens in the crown area, if you will. And one of those sections was exactly this steel kind of a light steel blue. That color is incredible. Isn't it? Yeah. It's really, really pr pretty. I, and I wonder if we can pick up on, on Facebook I on the screen. So, I hope so. Really, but really there will be a photo shoot uh, with, with R.S. Sassouni in here, so I'm sure there'll be some beautiful photos that people can look at to really appreciate it. And then it. as you overlay the second circle that uh, he created, you get this incredible effect. And every single way she moves, or we move the hair, it gives a different effect. And obviously I can play around with it a little bit and add maybe some volume creator. This is cool stuff. So this is I the, uh, love it's this. got the, is the it coconut system. in there or yeah. it's like Co a powder? Coconut and bamboo. This is from the Your Hair Assistant, Your hair the hair bamboo. Assistant yeah. yeah, I've tried that. I've had a lot of fun with that and that application through the brush. There's actually a powder in there and as you shake it, it comes out through the brush. It makes incredible texture. 
get incredible texture and volume wherever you need it. And it's not too heavy and you can actually just brush it away if you, you know, don't want the volume there anymore. But as you can see, you know, just a little bit of it gives me this incredible texture. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. We'll take a closer look again later at Vivian's color. Let's get back, is it Vivian or Lillian? Lillian. Lillian, sorry, I knew I was close. Uh, let's get back to rock and, and the technique here. And let's talk a little bit. Let's, so for those who, uh, who are just joining us, um, Rock's working in this spiral color technique. Do you want to kind of give us a recap and explain where, what you're working with and, okay. and what's happening? The spiral technique is definitely one of my favorite way of working for simply that we're working with a round surface. And when you work within the spiral movement into the hair is when the color falls, it's seamless as you just saw from her model. Um, so that's what's very interesting about it. Um, you want to give me the paper so I can just put it over? And by working with the principle of pre-zone, by having your base, your textured area, and your lid, it gives you the freedom to create however you want. Um, so right now what I'm doing is I'm doing a slicing technique, and I did a split. And I'm using the flamboyage paper from Davinus. And the flamboyage paper from Davinus, what's so special versus to um, your aluminum paper, your foils, or any thermal paper, um, it has an adhesive on the paper. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to go and stick the hair onto the paper as you can see here. And you flatten the hair with your comb so it just like it slides perfectly. So you can see, nothing move. And as an artist, it gives you the freedom to create on that paper any pattern you want. So right now you saw me that I was putting a darker base to create a root effect, my lightener into the perimeter here, and darker into the middle to the ends. I could also do, if I want to, is I could go get my darker color and I could go say I'm working into a triangle effect. So I'm going like this and I'm just applying the color in this zone. Then I could use, after that, my lightener. And if I want a more contrast, a much more defined, is I could actually create a defined line. And then I could just go and work my lightener towards the So you can really get into these kind of abstract patterns. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's what's fun about a plum voyage, actually. Yeah. Um, we've seen beautiful work created uh, with Angelo Simonera and his team, uh, all the technique he does into the hair, and actually he invented the flamboyage, voyage, mm -hmm. and, uh, and he has provided us, the colorist, an amazing tool to create. Yeah, it absolutely. Actually People got really excited. Next level. And you can watch it all process, and yep. it looks so beautiful and interesting, the whole different way of applying color. Exactly. Yeah. Do you still work with foils? Do you uh, have any time where you use, use traditional foils? Yes, there is yeah. time that you would use foil because sometimes you would need the foil to isolate and you need the extra heat from the foil right. to give you that so extra for isolation boost. and heat. Yes, exactly. I right. um, also work with thermal paper, which is a little bit more lighter, a little bit less uh, powerful than foil. So for Got more it. sensitized hair, a little bit more fragile hair, and also to maybe fine hair because of the weight right. uh, sometimes. And flamboyage is whenever you want to do something creative, something wow, or your balayage effect into the hair. And what's amazing about this placement here right now is when the hair is going to fall, actually the light goes from it and there's a dark. Now I could do the next one and reverse it. Actually I could put the dark into there and the light underneath. Right. And this is what it's creating. It's creating all different types of movement. So Excellent. you decide. Excellent. So now let's talk a little bit about the spiral pattern here. And yep. you know, Anna said how she's working with it within the haircut. Um, tell us a little bit about, about you know, why this pattern and any tips on how people can do this sectioning because it can be kind of tricky. I think um, you kind of showed a little bit of the pre-sectioning here yeah. um, and that can be very, very difficult to do cleanly. Uh, what kind of tips do you have? Well, actually, it, it actually looks scary, but it's very simple. Um, how do you work with it is basically is you start with your T-cross section for, from your front here all the way to the back and your classic T cross section from ear to ear. So you could actually see those lines here, okay? And once you did your cross section, the first thing you're gonna get out of the way is the lid area. It's okay, so that's that to top yeah. number, exactly. is it number one or number three? That's zone number one. Number one, okay, so it goes to. from the top down, yeah. got it. And here is what we do is then we just take a section, so you have like a pie shape because you have your cross section. Right. And then you take your point and you just go to the next one and you clip it, next one, next one, and next one. It's the easiest way to do a circle. Excellent. And you determine the size of what you want. 
And the best way to, to follow too with your comb how to make it is never look at your tail comb how to section. Always put your finger to the direction you want right. to the start and Same just with bring cutting. it. Yeah, you bring exactly. the comb to. So you want to bring that, uh, we'll bring the diagram up here. We'll stick it up here so we can see exactly what, uh, what Rock is working with. Oh, good catch. No paper cuts, be careful. Okay. We don't have that kind of insurance here. All right. So we've got these three yep. circles here, and that's what we're seeing, the lid, the shape yep. in the middle, and then the, the perimeter here. Exactly. Yep. And actually, if you look at this one here, this is the top view. So how did we just do it is like basically you just decide and you do your first, then you do your second, then you do your other one, and then yep. you do your thing. I, always, I say the same thing when I teach people with cutting. It's much to try to take a full circle and hold it. So much easier to take those little pie sections. Exactly. Cleaner. Now there's a, um, like a slight asymmetry to the sectioning. Yes. Uh, can you explain why? Um, I wanted that effect because mm. it's not because it's almost like a, um, a solid cut a little bit on each side that you cannot have a bit of fun uh, with color. Also too, you have to see that by taking the whip here being more narrow, wider on one side, means that when the color is going to fall, it's going to have more of a sheer effect. Right. And here's going to have more of a solidity effect. Right. So because there's less color, just a little yeah, bit's going to, this exactly. is going to have more of the base. Excellent. Okay, let's get back into this application. So, so neat here. I mean, you, you do beautifully neat, neat work. Any, any tips on how to, you know, be precise? Again, I, I see so much color now, and at the end result is kind of exciting, but sometimes I watch the, um, the videos, mm -hmm. and it's so messy, and there's stuff all over the place, and I feel like, you know, that's maybe some place where people need to remember how important the application is. Exactly. Yeah. I totally agree with you. Um, we live in a social media world now, and our business card is worldwide now mm -hmm. uh, via the media, so, the social media. Um, and you know, you have clients sitting on your chair and they're with their phone. And the first thing you know is they're taking pictures and they're posting it or sending them to their friends. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we have competition. Competition is uh, mass market color. Uh, and then we have professional sure, drug color. Drugstore color, yeah, exactly. sure, do it at home. Do it at home and everything. And for me, if your application in the salon looked like somebody could do it at home. Right, then why wouldn't they? Right. Why wouldn't they do it? Right. Why would they come to your salon, pay the big bucks, and have your color done by you? Yeah. So It's, it's part of the experience of exactly. experience a crafted you know, application and someone that's very, very neat and organized. Uh, I think that's a great point. I hadn't even thought of it that way. I was just really thinking about hairdressers and kind of us being craftsmen, but even the client can experience that. Yeah. Yeah. And see, a lot of times you'll just see people put in four big ponytails and they'll munch in a bunch of color. The end result can be kind of fun and vibrant, but it's, it's nothing like this, this in interesting dimension. Exactly. So for me, my application always has to be clean. Um, either if it's off the face, depending on the technique you're doing, so the client doesn't have any color around her skin, um, it's off, it's clean. Actually, when you're looking at it, it's perfectly, it's uh, seamless, um, because when they're sending picture to their friend, they're sending something that they're looking at it, and it's wow, it's clean. Mm -hmm. And then that's your business card, okay? If you're just like posting pictures, like I say, if like you did it at home, then again, why would you go to the salon? And that's very important uh, for me, how we work. So you seem to be taking the same sections, um, you split it and then the lightener is on the left piece, let's say, and then the... Uh... Yep. In this pattern, what I did on my model, it's exactly this pattern. But like I say, um, you are the artist, you decide. Also too, if you want to have something more bold, if you want to have something more soft. So the technique I'm using here, it's something that gives you um, a little bit more softness because it's very diffuse. At the same time, too, what's very interesting is how do you apply your toner after if you want to? Because since you're working in a circular movement, you could still pin top, and then you could do pinwheel effect and just alternate two turner, two turner, turn, boy, my French and English, <laughs> two Franklish. toner, Franklish. toner, yes, French lips, uh, into the hair, and it creates a new dimension into it. So that's something that is very fun. So right now you're working on, on the lighter side? Right now, I'm Just working in this section here. So this is the back of her head? Uh, yeah. yeah. So this is the section that it's already pre-done. Right. And we're working right now Across in this section. This side. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're coming here into arrive here. Now here we'll have two sections. This will be fully lightened. 
because this is kind of the blueberry steel that you saw in oh, the yeah. hair. Oh yeah, yeah. That that color was incredible. Yeah. What's the formula for that? Is it the uh, blueberry? That steel? comes from the toner. Yeah. It yeah, but that blue. Toner. Just tell us now for anyone who saw it, and we'll we'll post it again. That beautiful. That's a great name. The blueberry steel. Yeah. What was I that? Love it. Um, first, I used the 000 from Matt's Fiber Chrome, the 2.11, which is kind of a very bluish color. And at the same time, our new 911. Uh, 911 is a very silver color. Um, it's beautiful. So what I do is by adding 00, zero is I reduce the weight of the color mm -hmm. into it, so it has a little bit more sheer. The 9.11 is giving you that silvering effect, mm -hmm. and naturally the 2.1 will give you that blue. So. Amazing. And if you guys missed it before, we'll be sure to bring uh, Lillian, Vivian, Lillian, Lillian, Lillian back. And show you that what is what yeah. uh, Rock is calling the blueberry steel. There, that's a beautiful, beautiful and color. And you know what? That's what's amazing about uh, that and this color. Um, you are the artist, have full control, and you can intermix any of the shades and uh, just create whatever you need. So again, if anyone's just joining, you can see that we're here in Montreal with Rock LeMay, who is a uh, award-winning colorist. So I don't know. I, I I don't know for sure, but I don't know if anyone has won both. Canadian Hair Colorist of the Year and North American Hair Colorist of the Year. Are there any? Are you any at the class time? Player? I was the first one. The, uh, I don't know after. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what what what's, what was that like? What uh, what was the experience? You said it what happened both in the same year. Yeah. So actually, that must have been a big year for you to win both of those. Yeah, it was. It was a, a big year, and um, uh, we worked hard. We worked hard on preparing the collection, um, and uh, we worked six months in workshop testing and everything. So it was very rewarding winning the Naha and the uh, Contessa uh, in the same year. Any tips for any young hairdressers, or maybe even not so young hairdressers, but people who want to perhaps enter Contessa here in Canada or Naha in the US and Canada, because it's, it's the whole continent. Any, any tips that you would want to give? The tips that I would recommend is to surround yourself by a great team that yeah. knows what they do if you're starting, because it's a competitive world. If you're entering, you have to remember there's a lot of big names into it that are competing and this is who you're going against to. So nothing better than being prepared. Do your research, do your homework of what you want to do and what you want to design. And surround yourself by people that know what to do. Uh, a photographer that knows how to shoot hair. Often we go get photographer that are fashion photographer, but we're looking like somebody like Ara. Ara is a hairdresser at the right. same time that does hair, so he understands when he takes picture. Right, because uh, a lot of times, you know, even though the fashion, the editorial exactly. is beautiful, the hair gets lost. Yeah. Yeah, and, and someone who maybe understands how to spotlight the hair for a hair competition kind of makes sense, right? Exactly. Yeah. So surround yourself by the right people, because remember, when you're competing, you're competing with people that has experience, mm -hmm. people that have been doing it for a while, and that's who you're going against too. So if you want to have all the chance on your side, homework, research, surround yourself by an amazing team, then just have fun. Believe in yourself and just go and have fun. Marina, Excellent. Wayne, Sarah, hello. Thanks for joining us. Hey guys, thank you everyone for joining us. Of course, we'd love your questions. I've gotten so immersed in this technique here. I'm going to jump back in here and have a look at what people are talking about. And uh, Rock, again, tell us about the, the formulas and um, any tips that you have in formulating Davines in particular. As someone who's worked with lots of different color lines, when formulating Davines, are there any particular tips that, that you find you'd want to give someone who's maybe first starting to use it? Or Well, first of all, it's, a, a, it's an easy system, okay? And it's a system that's not complicated. It's a system that, again, gives you the possibility to create and to play with it the way you want to. Um, how I formulate with it is basically you know you need to know your rules uh, of color and to be able to formulate. So we have here what I formulated for my models. Um, <coughs> the base color I use is I use a 4.55. Here five is mahogany kind of base. And then I added 2.11. Your 11 is, if I want a mahogany more deeper, I add a bit of blue into it. Then I added just a dab of black to give a little bit more depth. So that's a little bit how I create with Davinus. Um, so guys, we'll take a picture of these formulas for sure and put it in the feed so everybody can have, uh, have a look at the different um, formulations. And now this was all with um, Vibrochrome? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right, tell us a little bit about Vibrochrome. As, as a, what, what, is that the, um, the permanent line? Is it, for those that don't know, is it 
A matte cyberchrome is your permanent oxidative color. Permanent uh, oxidative color. Yes, form. so you could lift as well as you could deposit color. Um, gives you excellent white hair coverage. Um, also, too, um, it also too could become your demi. Uh, it's, is that by using a different yes, developer? Yes, a mild alkaline demi. Okay. Uh, so what you do is by using a double quantity of five volume into your color. So any of the shades into your uh, mask fiber comb can instantly become your demi, which is cool because uh, when you're doing a permanent color at the scalp area and then you want to refresh your mid length in the ends, you don't have to try to figure out, why do I mix in my demi? You could just go and use your desired shade. And again, for anyone that's just joining us, uh, these are the flamboyant strips that uh, are from Davinez. They were designed by Angelo Seminara as a, as a creative way to apply color. And there's a few different ways to use them. I remember we learned from Naomi Knights about the classic application. And then what you're doing is the split where yep. you put it and you peel it in half. So it almost gives like a pre-woven effect. Exactly. Because some pieces go to one side and some go to the other. Exactly. So, so as you see here, I just created a root effect my lightener here uh, following the root effect and darker tips. So my next here, you could see the little bit of hair I have here. This is gonna be my 5.56. So I'm gonna start from the scalp area to there. So I'm kind of shifting the effect at the same time of light. And then when these are gonna to blend together, they're gonna to be very soft. Fantastic. Okay. And again, you know, is there, obviously you're working with three different colors. Within each one of these strips, um, are you, you're applying them in a different way? It's not the same exact pattern within each um, You go with your feeling. Um, here, basically, I'm kind of repeating the pattern. But like I mentioned earlier, is you could change your pattern. Um, you could work of making um, the general rules. Remember, if you make the roots area lighter, lighter at the root gives you the illusion of volume. So if you want to create an effect of volume. Darker so lighter at the root, it makes expand, it feel expanded, yeah. as opposed to depth at the root, which collapses it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So depending on the haircut you have, if you have a top that is very fitted, and our model is what we did, is we did a darker lid, mm -hmm. because we wanted to have the close fitted effect. Can we bring um, Vivian? Lillian. Chibar. I have this click. It's a, let me give you a hand up here. Lillian, again, we can see this is the actual technique, the haircut that Anna did. That's, uh, Rock, if you want to explain it, because now we can see exactly all this meticulous work that he's doing <coughs> comes together to make this incredible end result. Okay, so as you can see here is basically, it won't turn you around. The effect that we're creating right now is at the root area. So as you can see here, you have a lighter color in this area, darker tip. But it's soft. It's not a definite line. I wanted that soft diffusion created into the hair. Then you have some darker color from the lid connecting it. So it makes the color kind of seamless. You don't see the highlighting effect where it comes from and everything. So then following here, then you have this section which we saw that's going to be in the front a little bit here. This is going to be pre-lightened. So it starts from fine and it goes into a much more wider section. And if I lift this here, as we could see, we could see it's kind of a steel effect color with a bit of a blueberry. If you look like kind of a blueberry, it sometimes has that white powdery effect. So it's got this nice kind of color effect onto the hair. Okay. And like I say, in the lid is basically to connect everything. Awesome. Anna, do you want to come up and talk a little bit about the haircut as well? No. Okay. She's busy get preparing for the photo shoot. They've been shooting away here. This beautiful, beautiful shape. Thank you, darling. We'll pull you back in in a little while. Let's get back into the technique. Well, Good. Jeremy's here with us, Gerard. He's digging What's your threads up? right now. Oh, thank you, buddy. I wore my jacket just for you up here in Montreal. Thank you. And guys, always remember that at the end of this, we upload these in HD. So if anyone has any connection issues out there, maybe it's something from Canada to the US, at the end, we'll upload this in HD. It'll be a beautiful, beautiful video. You can watch it at any time. You can come back and go in our video section yeah. watch it at any time. Also, if you look at the fun, it's by working in a circular pattern. When you're putting your papers, see the effect it gives you. Yep. It's a very nice finishing effect. And clients always impress, especially if you have clients sitting next to you that are waiting for another color service. Or well, they're going to ask, different. what's going on what's there? Going yeah, on? Look it's at something all this different. Amazing. They're not used mm -hmm. to see it and everything. It's like triggers a conversation. You know, when I was a young hairdresser, um, my first salon that I worked in was owned by someone who really specialized in color. And he used to always change his foil colors. Like for Easter, he would use these pastels. Okay. And then at Christmas, he would use red and gold. And, you know, it was the same idea because it was like something to talk about. 
You know, it was like, like this, you notice it. And, you know, for him, you would notice all these. His name was Vince Smith, still a good, dear friend of mine. But he was like an early pioneer in that thinking that, you know, you have to make the application look beautiful so that the clients are intrigued and you have something to talk about. All right, so the technique is moving along here. You're literally, and obviously we can see why it's called spiral, because you spiral around. Yeah. Do you keep, you're going to keep going all the way in the spiral? Up well, first this? we're going to stop at this section, yeah. so we need to pre-light in the front. Um, do you know where that comes from, the inspiration? Uh, no, I don't. Actually, uh, Montreal is known for that. It's known for their round staircase oh, right. outside the houses. Right, because right. Uh, uh, in Quebec, uh, the living space is like the city, like we, we need to maximize the living space as much as we could. So right. the architectural here is they put the staircase outside. Mm -hmm. And within the small space, the only way you could fit a staircase to go to your second floor, your third floor, was a spiral staircase. Sure. So if you look at a spiral staircase, is you're seeing all the steps. Mm -hmm. So you start from your bottom, and you work all your way up to the top. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with the technique. Work from the bottom, the base, work all the way up to the lid. Yeah, it's a, you know, that's the great thing about what we do. We can take inspiration from so many things and make it yeah. practical. You know, so you can take it from architecture, culture, fellow hairdressers, fashion, books. Um, I've taken, you know, I, I love that. And I think that's what keeps us so intrigued. Yeah, exactly. Again, and so. And here I didn't do a split effect. Um, you didn't do a split. Nope. So Here's this is a classic? A or classic. Trying to see if I remember what Naomi taught, a classic. taught me last week. A classic. And, and uh, the difference would be between the split and the, is it like a slice versus a weave? Um, this one would have a much more stronger lightning so effect. So like a solid slice. slice. Yes. So yeah. it would have a little bit more powerful uh, contrast between the two shades. Got it. Okay, so less softness because there's no blending of the two colors. So here's a question that comes up often. Uh, what's the weight of these like on the head? You know, when you have uh, these many papers, is it, is it fairly comfortable? I don't comfortable? know, I don't have that many. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll have to ask our model later. You know, the model yeah. that we had last week said it was very, very light. You know, she didn't feel like it's actually lighter than foil. Yes, um, um, actually, yeah. Um, and well, it always depends how many do you put in. Right, um, right. As you can see, there's a lot. Well, and that brings up another great question that always comes up and about pricing. Yeah. So, you know, when you're doing this much, this is very labor intensive, very kind of customized color. How do you price something like this? Well, it's a signature color. And the best way of working pricing for that is basically it's for quantity of product and usage of paper. So okay. you can have a chart of basically saying, okay, if we use paper up to 25 papers, they say, they say like it's $1.50. Per okay. paper, no product yet. Mm -hmm. Then we say, so it's like your base. Yeah, your base. How many of the flamboyant strips did you use? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Then if you go into maybe a uh, 50 paper, then you can say, okay, we drop it to a dollar 25. You go to a 75, then you can say you drop it to a dollar because the more paper you put in, you have to bring it to an acceptable price. Right. And uh, after that, um, you go by the product. So the quantity, how many grams of product you use, and everything um, to charge for. And uh, so I think that's kind of justifying like the price. Mm -hmm. um, I still feel that price has to be reasonable because again, um, we have competition, which is kind of drugstore, mass market. Right. Um, and if our price are becoming too outrageous, um, then client, why would they come to this long? Now, I, I know uh, that you have a celebrity clientele and you've done some um, yeah. in that range, but are you still behind the chair as well doing clients? Yes, I'm actually, I work at Pure okay. every day. Okay. I work four days a week in the salon. So if this was, you know, a 20-something year old, this was, you were doing this application on, she wasn't a celebrity, what would you charge for something like this? Um, I would say it would be something like maybe um, 180. 180. Yeah. I think that's, that's fairly it's reasonable. Yeah, reasonable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's um, great. because you know what, you want it to be acceptable and also 2D the uh, maintenance after when right. the client's going to come and see you. Right. Working that effect, if you notice, I put the dark at the scalp area, so when that ends underneath of a ring, right. when she comes back, it's strictly a uh, new growth retouch. Right, right. So It's just a single process. Just a single process color. And Cal, if you see any questions coming in there, let, let me know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Okay, so again, now... You're um, all in the salon at this time working. Hey, no, Jeremy, we're no. in uh, Montreal and <laughs> Davines, Salon Pure. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, if you guys have a chance to come up to Montreal, it's a fabulous, inspiring city. Uh, beautiful combination of French and English and North American and yeah. Canadian. And it's a very, very um, global city, I think. And I could see that inspiration everywhere that you go. Um, and talking about French, yeah, let's say bonjour, uh, bonsoir. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to uh, les coiffeurs, coiffeuses uh, québécoises. Yeah. Québécois. Et, uh, et aussi à nos amis français. 
sont donc euh, s'ils sont en ligne. Un petit bonsoir. Je m'appelle Gérard. That's... Bonsoir Gérard. Yes. That's that's my. Uh, I did study French for four years, but that's about as far as I got. I was always getting kicked out of class. Why? Uh, I just wasn't a good student. I was a much better. I was thinking about hair already in high school. It's like get me out of here. I want to be a hairdresser. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So uh, time-wise, obviously we're doing the lesson, and you're kind yeah. of taking your time. H how would you book something like this in the salon? Well, at first here, we build it like for a photo shoot, so actually you could reduce this, meaning that you don't have to do the effect on every paper. So if you want to reduce the application technique by 50%, it's like remove 50% of the paper. Right. So time-wise, it would be already faster. Um, <coughs> so booking this is usually for this type of technique. They gave us an hour block for us to be able to apply, to create, and then process. And usually the client will go and see the hairdresser two hours after mm -hmm. her original appointment. Excellent. Now, is it, you know, I notice obviously you have the luxury of working with an assistant. Yes. Um, if someone had to do this without an assistant, how would you suggest that they work with peeling the papers? Is it, is it possible, impossible? Oh, yeah, no, no, it is, it is possible. And I think we saw to it, Naomi, last week. Yeah. Uh, she, she worked it. So it's to be clean, structure on your trolley, mm -hmm. and just go and pick it up. It's very easy to peel out. Mm -hmm. And then you take it, and then you just go and deposit it yourself into and then you just deposit your strength same way excellent so you have the control excellent and you know what about in terms you know I know a lot of times people when they're talking about the lightener these days people are mixing it thicker for painting any tips on on mixing the lighter lightener uh, well the different ratio of mixing is giving you different strength right. um, I believe in measuring my lightener that's very important so I believe in measuring the quantity of developer versus the quantity of powder mm -hmm. so if you put more powder equal ratio of your lightener to powder is you're creating a strong product that's giving you much more lift and if you're mixing it 1 to 1.5 it's giving you a texture that is more for highlighting if you're mixing it one to two, it's giving you a product that is lighter, more gentle to the hair. So it all depends what strength you want, and that's what's the difference usually. Well, great. So question. we had a great question about your toner on the blueberry steel. Yep. Kelly's going to read off that question. Was it mixed one to two with five volume? Yes. And would you ever add more developer to dilute the pigment versus using the triple zero? Do your developer when you dilute the pigment? Um, so because basically it's your activator, it's your acidic agent to your color. So um, basically what you need is to use your zero, zero, zero. It's a diluter, it's a base with no pigment and it's just reducing the quantity of pigment. Perfect, thank you. Hey Frank Mussolino. Excellent, excellent. Um, Cal, I'd love to jump down and there's a little bit of a photo shoot going on. I'd love for everyone to see the actual end result of this color technique and see a little bit of the, of the photo shoot that's going on. Um, so we're gonna jump down here. I'll give you a hand, we're on a sure. stage here. So let's come up in here with Ara Sasunian. He's doing a little bit of shooting on Lillian. Did I get it right this time? Yes. Wow, Gerard. Yes. Excellent. You can see the finished result there. Beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've got a little light happening. So this is the, you know, the, we've kind of worked in reverse here. The model was done first and uh, now we're shooting her here at the Salon Pure Academy, and then Rock is doing the technique on a mannequin so you guys can see what it's all about. Any tips for us, Ara, as you're shooting away? Uh, yeah, I love shooting uh, Lillian because, uh, first of all, she knows what she's doing, and um, uh, she has a lot of experience with us. So find a model that knows what they're doing. How important oh, yes, is the very, model? Very important because uh, he saves us a lot of time, you know. Uh, if it's somebody that who doesn't know how to pose and doesn't know the angle, it yeah, it's, it's impossible. Well. Yeah. So, so the uh, hair might be incredible; it might have great face, but if they, you know, it's a skill to to, to model. Course, and she it? has to be very comfortable in front yeah. of the camera and the photographer also. Absolutely. Thank you so and much. We have all that with her. <laughs> Excellent. You can see this. Yeah, you can see yeah, the finished result. Absolutely. This image is coming right up on the screen, and then everybody has a look and see. It looks like maybe there's going to be a little lip touch up happening here which is fantastic. Yeah, sometimes you have to check um, with detail, you know, what the, especially the face, you know, if uh, she's missing a uh, shine or uh, uh, makeup uh, to uh, counter, like uh, to, uh, to match the color, if the neck is white, 
Sure. So you're, you have to look at so many things. A yeah. lot. But, you know, you got to find that, that, that zen place. That yeah, and that comes with experience with uh, years of uh, shooting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Incredible. Thank you. Thanks for a little bit of that. Thank so you. Uh, do you have, I, I know as a photographer, you've won a lot of different, uh, you know, awards with hairdressers. Do you have some, some stuff nominated this year? Yes. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of um, competitions coming. Yeah. Um, and um, I mean, working with Pure, we always end. You always end, so, yeah. Naha, <laughs> Contessa. Pure's not in this year, but Anika? Anika, yes. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, it? uh, it's a big. Um, Excellent. Awesome. Cutting, yes, for cutting. Well, good luck, and, uh, and we'll see you and soon. Also, Love yeah, your work. And also, I wanted to add uh, one very, very important thing. Um, working with a, a perfect makeup artist is very important. <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, the makeup, the makeup is, um, uh, is a huge, is, huge part, yeah. as important as the hairdresser or yeah. the model and the photographer. Because who is our wonderful makeup artist? Hi. Beautiful job. Wonderful, wonderful job. Wonderful. Yeah. wonderful. All right, let's let's get back up here and see Rock's technique again. The model that we were just looking at, uh, Lillian. That is the actual same exact t technique that we're seeing here with Rock. Again, guys, if anyone out there is experiencing any connection problems, we do apologize. Um, it's it does happen in our day and age. But the good news is, at the end, we'll download this in HD, and it'll be a flawless, beautiful pr playback for you. Okay. Um, Gerard, I just want to show something on the diagram uh, so people are understanding uh, a little bit about the sectioning. And we did talk about this a little bit earlier, and I'm just going to want to show it here. Um, there's one thing you have to take in consideration when you're working with a ground surface. It's your sectioning. Um, if you see here, it's become narrow, and here will become wider. So your sectioning has to become wider at the base. So you have, so don't be afraid of that. And that is perfectly normal, okay? So they just become wider at the base here because it is a wider section, narrow section, so they are almost touching at the top, okay? Also, too, was asked, I think, about retouch, refreshing this color. So I have this client that we're applying the color. What do we do for re maintenance after? When she comes in to see us at the salon, all she's coming back for is a color retouch, simple as that. If you notice, the base that I use is your 4.55 here, 4.55 there, and also to in my application into my highlighting effect into that section here is I put a 4.55 at the scalp area. Then after that, I did one that it was going all the way to the scalp, my 5.56. So when this is growing, all you have to do is full head of 4.55. Simple mm. as that. Mm. Easy maintenance. And how, how often, when do you think they would need to come in for that? Well, we know hair grows half an inch per month. So yes. basically. Except it, right up here on the front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here, here in the back, just about in this area. Yeah. Um, basically, so usually they come into the salon every basically six weeks for a new growth application. Excellent. And then you would obviously charge differently. So this is exactly. something. Exactly. How it's often just, would they need this full process? This full process is big. I like to work with season change. Mm -hmm. So this is will be a full season application. Mm -hmm. Then after that, then we are going into um, another signature. And I like to make the color evolve. So when the next season arrives, I do not change everything. I will add a new element into it. Mm. Excellent. So, all right, so again, I'm sure lots of people are just joining. They can see all these beautiful flamboyage strips. Tell us a little bit about what they are. Tell us about the application and, and the formulas and, and how you came to this. Uh, Flamboyage is an amazing tool that's been created by Angelo Simnera. And uh, what's amazing about it, again, it is a see-through uh, plastic. It's got an adhesive on it. And also, too, it has a paper. So I have the opportunity of using the paper site if I need to, as well as the plastic section. Also, too, not only that, it's, you also have a little strip. Yeah, and that's, uh, you can lock in with those. I, you can I lock know. in with yeah. those, or also too, if you want to, you could put Do it something on creative. and yeah. have a straight line created on the hair and apply your product to have a definite straight line. Oh, okay. That's fun, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's really so it's fun. Giving you I've seen, you know, uh, our good friend Michael Levine, um, he did some cool color with some banding. I, I, I've seen some banding coming yeah. back. We just put one up today from a colorist called Jay um, Olsen. Mm -hmm. um, he did some banding around like this, and that's such a great idea using that tape. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Again, I'll, I'm not a colorist, so maybe people have done it before, but to me, I'm like, wow. I know it's been used for hair cutting too. Really? Way, way back, way back in the 70s, uh, they would put tape 
and cut shapes and I, and I know it's come back and, and forth a few times. It usually um, always does, huh? Yeah, yeah, but we can have fun with that. We can put the tape and cut. Yeah, I love it. We're gonna do some fun stuff. Yeah, we were saying maybe with these blonde boy eye strips, you could actually take a piece of hair and like and actually cut cut shapes in like kind of origami or something like that. Uh, could be kind of interesting. Also, too, as a colorist, it's very important your tools you're working with. So Davinus has created some new coloring brushes, which are totally, totally awesome. I've heard a lot of good things about the yeah. brushes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What I makes really them like so them. good? Um, first, I think it's the length of the bristle. Uh, I really like them. They're flexible. They work very well, especially when you want to diffuse a color. So you've got good, the balance of the brush. It holds very well in your hand. It feels like you have nothing. So, uh, at least here in Canada, if someone wanted to get the brushes or the flamboyage strips, um, is that something they can get through the, the Davines distribution? Yeah, yeah. No, no problem. In, yeah. in Quebec, you would go with Aura distribution. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ontario, it would be Metro. Yeah. Metro. Yeah, and uh, we're actually, you know, we're talking with um, Davines now about offering some of these pro tools through yeah. Hairbrain Pro. Mm -hmm. Because people are always asking about the flambaya strips and, and the brushes. So yeah. hopefully by next month, We'll be able to offer these to everyone that, that wants to try them out. And in the brushes, you have three. And if you look at them at the same time, you saw that the bristle are not even towards the edge. So it actually gives you a nice a diffusion. Way of diffusion. Yeah. Um, you have three sizes. The size does have an influence into your application. Almost just like scissors. So size yeah. does matter. Size does matter. Okay. Leave it, it or not. Got it. Um, that's what I was going to say at yeah. first, but now you yeah. said it. Um, so. The white brush, if you're looking at the white brush, it's for big section. And I often see colorists working with the white brush for any application. Right, right now, if you're seeing... Probably just to get through things quickly. Yeah, right? just go yeah. think quickly. Mm -hmm. But remember, you wanted to elevate your application skills mm -hmm. to difference yourself from home coloring to professional coloring. Right. So this section, this brush here for me would be for mid, like, and end. Whenever I'm refreshing, wider, mass, right. big section. And you probably need more saturation. Yes. Maybe? Yeah, yeah, so you kind of, yeah. This one here is more for my standard uh, root retouch. So I would be using this br brush for any time I'm retouching basic coloring. Right. And then this, you have your narrow brushes. This is more for your detailing. This is really nice. Yeah. I think people would really... Balayage, really, detailing. Yeah. Whenever you want to create something into the hair, it's got precision. They do have you know, a beautiful balance. As, I'm not a colorist, as everyone knows, but as a real tool junkie, this has a beautiful balance. This yeah, almost it like does. a razor. The balance is really beautiful. It does. Okay, cool. And like I say, the tools is important. Good clips, your combs. Um. So now you've you've kind of spiraled all the way around. Yeah. And, uh, let's now take a look at the sectioning. The section. So for those of you who can see, this is the sectioning that Rock was using. He kind of pivoted around the head. Exactly. Now you're working into these areas. Yeah, I'm actually working in this zone. Remember, we're working from bottom to top. And this is so, the pre-lightened zone. Yeah, that's a pre-lightened zone. This is actually where my blueberry steel color is. Right, and again, if you saw what we're doing the photo shoot or you saw uh, Lillian's hair, that blueberry steel is beautiful. And the good news here is that Ara sasunian has been shooting it, so we'll have some beautiful finished photos for you guys exactly. to see. Absolutely. And here you can see is what I'm doing is I'm applying the product at the scalp area, my 4.55, so I don't have any uh, regrowth effect. And hi, Monia. Hi, how you doing? Good. And I love the teamwork here at Salon Pure. You guys are really like a big family, and everyone's poor. We've probably got about 15 people here, which is yeah. amazing. Well, at Pure, what's amazing is we're a staff of almost, what, 85, Anna? 85, 87. Wow. Parents. Yeah. So it's huge salon, so imagine that then we work in that space like every day that we go in and we know working is we're more often with our co-workers and we're more at home. Now this space that we're in today, this is a, an academy. Yeah. So is this used this is for internal training, for external training, for all types of different things? Well, actually there's a school downstairs um, for a hairdresser apprentice. Okay. And uh, so people are registered so here. So on the first floor? The, is there's that... a salon on the first floor. Right. Um, and then there's a, a co like a, a cosmetology school. Is yeah. It, yeah. The first uh, salon downstairs is Oblique by Pure, and then after that we have the cosmetology school on the second can, floor. Can you talk a little bit about that? You know, in in the states, obviously, uh, we have um, licensure. 
and every different state has a different amount of yeah. hours. And you know, there's always like um, controversy. Should we change it? Does it work? You know, tell us how it works in Canada, just so people know. At least for people that are working in the watching in the U.S. or even in England or wherever they may be watching, how, how does it work? You know, here to become a certified or licensed hairdresser. Okay. So well, in Canada, we have provinces, and each province has its own regulation. Okay. So okay. like the way we have states. Exactly. Each province has its own rules. Yeah. Um, Quebec, you're probably going to be shocked for Quebec. We're not licensed cosmetologists. Okay. Um, so you're a chiropractor. <laughs> They're not licensed. They're an orthodontist. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, but we have amazing school. There's amazing talent. We know that in Quebec there's a lot of uh, artists. So people just have to choose to come to the school. Yeah. So they don't, they, like, they literally could just pick up and do hair without any type of licensure. It, yeah. It's, well, yeah. Um, it, it's very interesting. Ontario is different. Um, you have apprentice level. After that, you graduated from school that you go into salon and you have to follow that. So like an example at, at Pure, like uh, we're looking at uh, Xavier, we're looking at Ying, um, they came to the academy here, they did their fundamental training. Then after that being at Pure Salon downtown, um, what we're doing is we're continuing their apprentice basically in the salon. Mm -hmm. um, so they're learning more um, directly in the field. Right, right. So uh, you, you follow that traditional path. If someone chooses, uh, they, that gets them started. How long will they be in school for? Um, if they choose to go to school in Quebec. Well, you have different training. Everyone's different then. Everyone yeah, is yeah. different. You can mm -hmm. have a year training apprentice and you, as well you can have mm -hmm. a six month apprentice. Okay, so it's um, different you have to remember though when you go to school, if you have a six months, you're strictly learning the fundamental. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So. The Bri had a question about um, uh, on a typical basis, how long would you leave this to process? Um, what's amazing about masks with vibrochrome, and this is something that it's uh, securing for hairdresser, is basically it uh, it's not progressive. It's not progressive. Not progressive. Mask with it does not, not go darker than what you formulated, mm -hmm. and naturally what you applied it on. So mm -hmm. it respects. So if you pass, so it just works to where it's supposed yeah. to work, and then stops. Exactly. Which is great for creative color. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so if your though if your application is slow. Um, since here we're working on a mannequin head, we're okay. Um, what you would need to do is mix maybe lower quantity of product, less, mm -hmm. and remix fresh. Mm -hmm. Because we know that within the processing time of the first 30 minutes, this is where you have product strength. So mm -hmm. if you're taking like 45 minutes to apply, you lost a bit of the strength of the product. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation for somebody who's not working very fast, um, to mix small quantity of product and remix along the application. This brush is really nice. I can't stop holding it. Yeah. You know the balance, like they're uh, the best. Is yeah, it's like great. You, I have like uh, over something thirty years of experience in this industry. These are your favorites. I have to say they are. Mm -hmm. As soon as they came out, is I'm actually I'm always fighting at the oh, salon. To, yeah, always fighting in the salon to have them. Yeah, yeah. Can never have enough color yeah. brushes. Exactly. Okay, so it looks like you're finishing this zone. Yep. Kelly, is there a question? Yeah, Crystal is wondering about the tones that you're using. Uh, hi, Crystal. So the tone that I'm using is I want to create something that it's a little bit more um, plum. So the formulas are right here on the board. Um, the Basically the base color, uh, which, which is... would be the lid and it would be the nape area. I'm using my 4.55, my 2.11 and my 1.0. And this is all vibrochrome. Yeah, with vibrochrome and 20 mm -hmm. volumes. Then after that into the textured area what I'm using, I'm using Mask D. It's your lightning powder with uh, Davinus and with 20 volumes. So that's volume. the pre-lightened section yeah. that does the blueberry steel. Mixing ratio 1 to 1.5. Then uh, the next color that I'm utilizing next to it is I'm utilizing your 5.56 with your 6.66 and then my toner will be my 8.46 with my 6.66. And this 6. is the blueberry 6. steel. No, that's the red. The blueberry uh, still, I didn't uh, write it. Uh oh, that's a secret. No, that's it's not. No, I, we'll, believe we'll get sharing, I believe yeah. sharing formulation. I yeah. could write it. Yeah, I think everyone is really going to be interested in that one. If you've seen one, the, yeah. zero. Hey, zero, Sasha, how zero, are you? And two, 11. So here is I put 10 gram, 10 gram, and 5 gram. And this is with your 5 volume. And it's a 2 to 1. So, uh, and you choose five, five volumes, so it's just about the deposit. It becomes that's, your toner. It's that's about as much as I know about toning. Yeah. yeah, it becomes your demi. Right. 
Excellent. Cool. Okay, so cool. now we've just got kind of the lid left. Are we, is that the, the final portion of the color? Yeah, no, well, then after that, if we were continuing, uh, because it would be repetition of what I'm doing basically, um, is I would repeat this pattern, continuing into that next section, which would be actually your section here. So I would repeat the same pattern on top of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm using here a volume peroxide. Oh, okay, I see it. Yeah. You would be using a volume peroxide here could be lower. So if you're slower, you would use a 10 volume. If you're normal speed, you could use a 20. I wouldn't go anything higher than a 20. Got it. So okay. Chantel was um, with us and she's excited about this and she was wondering, uh, she's looking forward to the... Result? Uh-huh. Well, oh, let's, bring let's, on, let's bring let's her on. Let's bring on Lillian. Lillian. Yeah. Come on, Lillian. So here's the great thing about tonight. You Rock. finally got the model's yeah. name right. That's the best thing about it. Yes. <laughs> This is the beautiful Lillian. Her hair was cut uh, by Anna and the team here at Salon Pure and then colored by Rock using this exact technique and these formulas. So you can actually see this beautiful finish. There's the pre-lightened piece with the, um, with the beautiful kind of uh, blueberry steel in it and then we've got these different reds. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let Rock talk about the color but I love this haircut Anna. I love the little undercut in here opening up these beautiful cheekbones. Um, it's, you know, whenever I see these shapes, I always think Joan of Arc, you know, and oh, I nice. mean that, yeah, it's very kind of Joan of Arc and heroic, uh, beautiful, you need a sword. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And I'll let Rock uh, talk a little bit about the color here. Okay, so what's fun about working into a spiral movement is basically you don't know really where the color start or where it ends. Um, so again, we work with the three bases. We work with the base area being darker. So if we look under the blue steel is we have that beautiful kind of purple color that's going on. That's giving you the depth if you turn around. And you also too will see that dark color here underneath. That color is the same color that we put on the lid on the top. So it does a connection of both. Within the surrounding perimeter is we did that lightning effect that I just did right now, the section from a narrow section to a wider section here onto the side, giving me an asymmetrical effect. I lightened that up and I toned it with mask vibrochrome using 911 zero 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 to dilute the mass with 2.1 so the formula is on the board we'll post them later so everybody could get to see them with your five volumes that's your demi and into the spiral effect here is I alternated uh, flamboyage into a spiral movement that you're seeing here on my mannequin head and I did a split effect that we saw by Naomi last week and the split effect is giving me that soft diffusion that technique could be done on your tomorrow client. It could be very conservative. You could change your color palette. You could do it beautifully in coppers, beautiful in blondes, um, whatever color palette that you want to do. If you want this color technique to be more dramatic, more avant-garde, create a diffusion, it's not a diffusion effect, create a line, create an impact of having a, a split, a definition of your color. Make color contrast more different. Wonderful, thank you again. Thank you. And, okay. uh, Let's, let's see now the, the, the final uh, strokes here with this beautiful color technique. Also too, if you want to do the paper into the front is by using the, again, the spiral effect is you could do a color, just to give you some other cues of what you could do, is then we could go and do the scalp area um, with here, with this effect. So you're saying that you know even within this pattern there's lots of room for customization? Oh yeah, you mm -hmm. could use any of the element of design. You could use alternation, which we just did. You could use diffusion, you could use contrast. Um, whatever, you could use block coloring, you could do the effect that's harmony. Um, whatever you want to create, it's possible within those section again. So what I'm going to be doing is... Okay. So what I'm going to be doing is just here applying the color into the scalp area. And then here... And so will you continue to use strips on the top here? I will do it as a solid color, different okay. than what Lillian has, just okay. to, to give you some effect. And we're just going to go and do the... So right now, what, which, to, which formula are you applying? This is my 4.55 at the scalp. Oh, I have an, another off-topic question. What, uh, what cologne are you wearing? It's fabulous. Uh, okay. <laughs> this one is really... That's my 
Cologne. Signature. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's been for a long time. I'm a Yves Saint Laurent perfume man. Is that what it is? Yeah. It's, it's fabulous. And yeah. it was a perfume that was discontinued for a while. It's a oh. gauche. So did you buy like a vat of it? At the time, yeah. yes. But yeah. now Yves Saint Laurent, they brought it back. Yves gauche. Um, yeah. It's a very nice. It's got a very unique. Did smell. you ever see the film or read the book Perfume? Perfume. Yes, yeah. I saw the film. Yeah, that was really intense. Yeah. 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 Have you ever seen the movie Yves Saint Laurent? Uh, no, I, I, that's about the man, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, like a documentary about his life. Exactly. exactly. Incredibly it's inspiring. Really, I haven't seen that one. Yeah. There's actually two designers that really impresses me for a man's, um, it's Yves Saint Laurent and Tom Ford. Oh yeah, absolutely. I did see, did you see the one about Valentino? The that movie? Was also, yeah, yeah. That was very interesting as well. I'm very different from Yves Saint Laurent in every way possible, but he's also incredibly interesting for these people. I mean, you know, we, we can take so much inspiration from what they did. You know, they saw things that they had to create. They felt compelled to do them. Are you picking and up a different designers. color here now with your Yes, I will. Um, right now I'm starting to diffuse two colors, so I'm going to go and diffuse here a different color. This is my um, 8.46 uh, that I'm putting into the mid leg, and I'm strictly just diffusing the two colors together. Again. So now you're using the flamboyant strip just to kind of protect the underneath? Yes, exactly. I'm using just the, the paper. paper side. Yeah, mm -hmm. not the sticky bit. Just the paper side, just to give me a zone that it's a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then you're just like diffusing the color. And then if you just want to make sure that maybe you have just a little bit lightening effect towards the tip, then you could go get your lightener and just create your lightener. So just it's to give you an idea of different option of what you could do. I mean, you know, I, what, what I've noticed, you know, um, constantly is that it seems kind of rare now for people to just use one bowl of color from the, over the whole head. Well, you it's, know, yeah. it's like, you know, you're using different, like it's that color melting or color painting exactly. within every single section. It seems to be, you know, like kind of hair color is really matured in that way and personalized where it's not just one color over the whole head. Well, we're looking at hair differently now. Hair mm -hmm. is our canvas, basically, to express our art. And uh, it's an amazing canvas. It's got, first of all, that shape that permits us to create all those dimension effect. And also, too, you really want to difference yourself from home service. Um, doing this type of coloring services is a client, when she goes back at home, she cannot really reproducing it. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the biggest concern what hairdresser may have is like, how do I repeat the service after? Any signature color that you do to your client, first of all, is you do not repeat it. Right. Simple as that. It's a unique signature for that season. Right. And often the biggest mistake of hairdresser um, is that we constantly do the same service to our client. Right. And right. this is why sometimes... It's a quick that, way to lose people. A quick way yeah. to Even lose people. Even if they say, oh, yeah, just do what you did last time. I loved it. You should always have something, something new to, to offer. Say, and to do a progressing yeah. effect from right. this, basically. So the color will age when the next season will arrive. Look at it and add something new to it. Yeah. A new dimension. Uh, That's great advice. And everything. And, you know, colorists... Are way better at that than hair cutters. Yeah. Some of us, you know, oh, she loves her graduated bob, and I'm going to do a graduated bob all the time. Thanks. But I think we, as cutters, those who, you know, I know some, most of you maybe don't specialize, but for those who specialize in cutting, you have to be careful not to fall into that trap, because he or she might say, oh, I love what you did last time; it's great. And then you go into automatic pilot, and then you wonder why they don't come back. Because you still have to keep saying, well, what about a fringe? Or what about, are you sure you don't want to go shorter? Maybe we'll just kind of do a little undercutting so you can see what it's like. Colors are great at that. Um, cutters, or even if you do both, maybe you're doing a lot of that with your color. You have to do just as much with your cutting. I agree with what you said. Seasonally, try to push people a little bit. Keep them interested. Yeah, what's the hair. worst they can do? Say no, 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 no. But they won't say, oh, my hairdresser's boring. He always wants to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, you use the word fringe. Fringe, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of people use the word bang, but... Uh, well, it, for me, it's interchangeable, but what I always yeah. say is when it's a bang, you'll know. Exactly. Yeah. I'm... You'll agree. A hundred percent. I prefer ask. the word fringe. Yes. Also, too. Um, right now, what I'm doing is I'm doing the lid. Yes. This is the final step to your color. So this is the connection of all, um, as you could see, the length. Talk about that concept one more time, because yes, again, it was kind of fascinating to me, the three zones. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the one behind on. the first yeah. one. So this is what we're talking about here. Rock and Anna planned it out as what was in the base, what was in the texture yeah. zone, and then what's in the lid. And tell us a little bit about those zones. Uh, work backwards since you're working in the lid now. Okay, so the zones is basically um, the tree zone. 
It's a language that you establish in a concept of work for colorists. Um, as a colorist at Salon Pure, is I need to work, I work with hairdresser that cuts hair, and we need to be able to understand each other what we're doing so that the client lives uh, the positive experience in your salon. So when she leaves, she's got an amazing cut, amazing color, and both goes well together. Um, so by working with the tree zone is we have the base, which the base is your bottom part, and that's creating your foundation. Then we have the, the base, it's basically, well, determined in your hair cutting, the length. You do an undercut, you keep the length, you do a lot of texturizing in that zone. So if you do, then you have the option of color. Do I do a monochromatic color so it blends it all in, or do I do a solid color to create me a definition at the base, or do I do a light color to create volume and movement? Uh, because we know that light expand and dark define um, and create. So then after that, the texture zone. The texture zone is basically, that's where the, all the excitement is happening. That's where like Anna, basically when she cuts, she does all of her texture, all of the movement to create those beautiful haircut. And so naturally texture in the hair, when you're cutting it, it's complemented by textured color at the same time. Um, if it would be solid, then I would not put texture effect into it. It would be more of a solid So color. here again, we can clearly see the zones pre-sectioned. Yep. So on, the test zone the is two is here, which is your texture area, the living space where all the excitement is happening. And then after that, the lid is basically the roof of your house. It's connecting everything together. So the lid is connecting from the top part to the bottom part and making the... Uh, Exciting. Fun stuff in the middle. You know, it's interesting because, yeah. you know, a lot of times when um, in the past when I've taught creative haircutting, I always say, you know, if it's got more than three things going on, be careful because it can just become really busy as a haircut. If you've got more than three focal points, it's like there's too many things and, you know, it can look just like, uh, you know, the kitchen sink. I'm mm -hmm. sure they have that same kind of terminology. Yeah, and, we do. For, you know, and I like the way that, you, you know, again, you've got the three focal points here. Um, I think that's a great, great idea and a great concept. And again, the focal point could move. Like, you know, they're tree circle, basically. They could be smaller, sure. wider, front, sure. back, side. And you can play with different geometric shapes, maybe it's... triangles, circles, squares. Yeah, because if your yeah. texture side is wider on one side and narrow on the other side, right. it means it could be in a symmetrical haircut. Right. So where would you create the impact of the color? It's on the wider side. Right. Um, so it's giving us a language uh, to be able to communicate and work as a team. So the client comes out a winner. Right. So we're getting into the last few sections here yeah. on the lid. And uh, just tell us your final thoughts about um, working with this uh, Vibrochrome, mask with Vibrochrome, um, and a little bit about the kind of just a recap of the technique. Well, what I like about mask Vibrochrome, it is an amazing quality color. It's Italian. Uh, the performance of the product is stunning. The technology, the new science technology they use, incorporated textile technology into the color, which uh, increases textile durability. Textile technology. Yeah. Interesting. Um, now you would ask me the name, and I think I have a, a Louis Chatelain into this room. Louis? Uh, textile technology. Right now I do have a little memory blank. Um, the tree technology, we have quinoa. Quinoa. Yes. And then uh, we have... Uh, we have omega nine, omega nine, and for the smoothness and shine. It's the, the other hair. word that I. And I, then we have the uh, phospholipid fo carrier. Phospholipid carrier, mm. which exactly. Comes with the textile textile industry, and what's amazing about it, what it is, is basically the technology of that. It flattens your pigment so that you have um, the less. First of all, the product is very good quality, respect the quality of the hair, um, minimum sensitivity created to the hair. The swelling is minimum. And what it does is, since the opening is little, the uh, technology of the textile flattens the pigment so it slides into a smaller opening mm. and it stays locking to the hair, giving you the durability. Because if you look at textile, you have some um, textile that you wash and you wash and wash and it never fades. Right. So they went to look into why is it never fading into textile? Mm. Why? And they kind of like say, okay, how could we incorporate that science, that know-how into hair color? Um, that's one thing that's amazing about with mass fiber chrome. It's science and technology, small inventory, the possibility of mixing and extending your color portfolio to unlimited possibility. 
Um, the, uh, again, and also to having your permanent and your demi within the same line, facilitating yourself that it's easy for you to refresh mid length and in or to tone the hair within the color that you do at the scalp area. Now, I know you mentioned that after um, when you were washing, there'd be an important post treatment as yes, well. Yes, exactly. Um, it's always important that when you're rinsing a color, that post color care is important uh, step into your color. It will neutralize the free radical. It will stop the alkaline service, um, the oxidation process into the hair. Um, it basically will acidify the hair, closes the cuticle, increase shine, increase color durability. Um, the product we use is Minu. Um, so we have our Minu shampoo. And when you wash the hair after your Minu shampoo, we have our Minu post color care treatment. You apply that on the hair, that will blot hair, let it process three minutes. Then you have the option of applying your conditioner or your hair mask over the Minu post color care and let it process another five or 10 minutes additional. And here's the proof, beautiful, here, healthy, yeah, exactly. touchable hair, shine. moving well. And I, you know, I, I would say she's got fragile hair in, in general. Fine. Yeah, so, but it's, it's definitely maintained its health and shine and movement, um, even with the pre-lightening hair. Yeah, and that's well, she a, was not just pre-lightening here because when she arrived, she was actually color treated. Whoa. She was color treated to a lot of virgin. No. <laughs> Yeah, color treated about a level three, so I had to cleanse the hair first. So we cleanse the hair first, and we lighten the section that we really wanted to lighten into one step. Once we did that, we rinse her off, and then we pre-stain the hair prior to the color, and then we did the color technique. So, in final, this was the sectioning pattern, the spiral sectioning that Rock's been working with. You yeah. can see how he used the uh, flamboyage to spiral around the three different formulas, which um, we'll be sure to post a photo of these formulas uh, on this beautiful haircut by Anna and the team. Any, any final words, Anna? Uh, you know, I love working come, with come. all of my colors, and, uh, but with Rock, in the last couple of months, I think we've been working more and more, uh, yeah. especially Synergy. As, well as, as well as Louis, who's back there if you want to yeah, get him. So, you know, I'm spoiled if you're. Absolutely. I'm surrounded by talented people, um, phenomenal products, uh, great in house photographers, and amazing great assistants. food. And We're great all going to go out and have a wonderful so, dinner you know, here in Montreal. We have uh, an amazing formula. Yeah. You know, Excellent. things are. Going well. let's, excellent, let's excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for hosting us. Thank yeah. you, Rock, for sharing Pleasure. all your knowledge with us. Thank you, Anna, for providing this incredible space, and Davinez for, for bringing us all together. Thank you, Davinez. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.